This is a really quick video just to uh, outline a few of the uh, video camera options for small independent video productions. They're available today from uh, the uh, camera on your phone uh, through to a, a small camcorder type camera and also a uh, digital SLR. So we'll have a look at these three different cameras and compare the advantages and disadvantages uh, to a few of these different options. So the, the portable movie camera has really come quite a ways from uh, the days of the old Super 8 camera that had the, a separate sound recorder and you had to send the film away for getting developing and that sort of thing. And then in the 80s and 90s, we saw uh, the larger VHS camcorders come on the market for the home uh, user and uh, still had you know separate audio in a lot of cases, but were very large and bulky sort of things. And all the way up until today now with you know the technology the way it is in some of our mobile phones and the small devices that we're able to capture very high quality video on, it's really sort of changed a lot for the home user or for the small independent video producer. So we're going to look today at a few of the options that are available um, to you as a, as a small independent video producer trying to create a, a, just a short video for, you know, for your office or for, uh, or for your class or, or for whatever it is you're, you're trying to do. So one of the options, uh, obviously the most uh, um, probably available option is going to be just your smartphone. Um, today a lot of smartphones have great video quality um, and uh, very available very capable little cameras uh, right in our pockets. The next option is a, uh, a camcorder. Uh, these are um, you know, still certainly very common uh, types of video cameras that are um, around today. Um, have a few more options than say your smartphone is going to have and still fairly affordable and, and, uh, and available. The next option is uh, the digital SLR or the single lens reflex camera. Um, these cameras give us a whole bunch of uh, options in terms of uh, quality and, uh, and uh, manual capabilities that the other cameras may not have. So let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages to each of these cameras. So starting with the smartphone, obviously the big advantage is the accessibility. Um, these things are available. Um, lots of people have them already in their pockets every day. They have great video quality. Uh, getting better all the time. Very small, very portable. Uh, it's not going to be a lot uh, to carry around for the day just to, to do your shoot. So, you know, not a lot of, um, you know, you don't need big bags or equipment or anything like that. It's just small, portable, carry it with you, no problem. And, and a fairly inconspicuous way to do your shooting. Nobody's going to really think twice if they see you shooting uh, your video camera um, um, you know, and it's, and it's just a smartphone. Disadvantages, uh, no microphone input, so you're really limited to the microphone on the camera itself and how good that quality is and how close you are to your audio source will really determine how good your audio comes out. There's no way to monitor the audio either, uh, so you don't know exactly what the audio sounds like coming into the device as you're recording. Typically no optical zoom, so that means uh, that you're going to have to move closer to your subject to get the, the picture bigger, uh, to get your subject larger in the frame. Um, you know, zooming with the digital zoom on these cameras, if it's capable of doing that during video recording, tends to degrade the quality of the image quite a bit. So you're really sort of limited to that. Um, not a great depth of field, so depth of field being where you can put some things in the image out of focus and some things in focus at the same time. Uh, not really a lot of option for that. The sensor on these is so small that typically the, uh, the focus is set and um, you know everything tends to be sort of in focus. Uh, not a lot of manual adjustments, so if you need to adjust your exposure, make it brighter or darker, depending on the uh, scene and the lighting in the scene, um, you don't really have that option. They do get to be a little difficult to hold steady because um, they're so small and lightweight, it's hard to sort of hold them steady. A, a big heavy camera is a lot easier typically to, to keep steady. And there's no tripod mount on a, on a smartphone, so there's no real way to get it to stay steady um, if you wanted to do that. Uh, you can get aftermarket accessories for your phones sometimes that will adapt to a tripod, but it's not built in. 
So the camcorder uh, is sort of the middle option. Uh, again, great video quality. Uh, still fairly small and portable. Not a whole lot to, to sort of carry around with you. Um, you do have some manual override. You can usually adjust the exposure up or down a bit and maybe do a little bit with the focus. Um, they do tend to have audio inputs and outputs, so you can put in microphones and, and monitor the audio with headphones a lot of the time. Uh, and they do have a decent optical zoom range, so um, you, know, you can stay static in one spot and be able to zoom into something that maybe you can't physically move to. Disadvantages of the camcorder, um, again, it's a fairly small sensor, so you're not going to get uh, your depth of field, again, is going to be pretty limited. Uh, everything's going to sort of be in focus as it was with the smartphone. They can be tricky to adjust those manual overrides uh, through the menu system. There's, you know, a lot of menus to get through to sort of find those features and to do that, and it can be a bit tricky to sort of get around some of that, so get to know the camera first. Um, and they do tend to um, have uh, odd file formats or can have odd file formats. Sometimes these cameras uh, record in you know HDV or um, um, XD or, or a number of formats that aren't necessarily compatible with your editing software. And you may have to re-encode that video in order to be compatible with your uh, editing software. So just be aware of what format the uh, camcorder is recording in. The DSLR, of course, uh, is sort of the superior HD video quality. Um, much larger sensor, so we're getting better, um, uh, getting better resolution there. Um, also, uh, tend to have better lenses, larger lenses, so you get better optics. Um, you know, producing a superior video quality. Um, very versatile in the manual options they have, often have audio inputs, and you are able to get that depth of field, that, that shallow focus where some things are in focus and some are out, depending on the lens selection that you're using, but you, you are able to change the lenses on those cameras as well. They do tend to be more expensive, obviously, uh, for a higher quality camera. Uh, they require some photographic knowledge in terms of the aperture and shutter speed control if you want to take advantage of those uh, uh, depth of field options. And they do tend to be a little bit more bulky um, and, and you'll be a little more conspicuous shooting the DSLR out in public than you would be, say, with a smartphone. So those are just some really quick advantages and disadvantages to each camera. Hopefully that helps you sort of determine uh, what your needs are for your particular video shoot. Um, again, all great options. You just have to be aware of the limitations of each of those and try and work uh, within them.